So we're going to make some flowers today. Um, I'll just chitty chat here for a moment. So I was telling everybody about my little poodle back here in the background. That's Tina. She's made from plywood. Um, she's really heavy. And she is painted with um, a sponge. You put on a black coat and then um, sponge on some gray to make it look like curly poodle hair. So that's what I've been doing aside from making flowers and folios and all kinds of fun things. Um, so I sure wish I could see my comments where I'm supposed to see them. That is rather disconcerting. Anyway, okay, let's get started and make some pretty flowers. Now I got to turn the camera down, so hold on. flower we're going to make. Um, it is very simple to make. You are going to need two of these and these are cut with this, these, um, the new folio page pocket and flowers die set from Eileen. Um, when they send us these, they don't send us the packaging that you get, but I think this is what the package actually looks like here. And these are the dies that come in it. So the, what we're going to be using is this die right here, and we'll cut two so of this one. And this one in the center that I call Starburst, we're going to need three of those. So the first thing we're going to do is ink the edges. And I'm using one of Eileen's blends inks. This works very nice. <laughs> Billy says hi to Chena. Billy was my next door neighbor when I used to live in Colorado. And she knew Chena. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. I'm not going to be nearly as good as Eileen is in watching comments, especially since this is not where they're supposed to be. But that's all right. If you have any questions, and I don't catch them while we're doing this video, um, just leave them in the comments. I will go back and read everything and answer any questions that you might have. So now I'm just putting a little ink in the center. And I think all around the edges. Okay. Now, you want to take your scissors. And each of the little notches you want to cut in towards the center. Don't cut all the way. What we're doing is just making so that each of these petals will be a little bit easier to shape. So go all the way around your flower and cut. So you can see, I think, do that with both of them. Okay, so now I've trimmed around both of them. I've inked them both. Whoops. Kind of crowded over here in my workstation. I'm actually working right in front of my computer, which is a little bit tight quarters. Okay, I'm just going to drag my craft mat over here because the next thing I'm going to do is take some um, mist, just plain old water. And you could use any kind of mist if you wanted to, you know, Prima, Lindy's, whatever. Uh, and I do that sometimes, but today I'm just going to use some water. And you want to lightly mist. You don't want to soak, but you want them to get kind of wet. I don't know. These are pretty wet. Can, can you tell? Okay. Pull that out of the way again. And if it's too wet, you can just take a paper towel and block them very lightly. Now... Where did I hide my tweezers? Okay, I was so organized. I got everything I needed, and I put it right in front of me. And now I can find it. Well, boo hiss. Hold on. OK, 
Okay. Oh, there they are. Good. These are the ones that I like the best. They're just straight tweezers and pointed, but these are the ones I use if I can't find these. And these are will work just as well. I just don't like the fact that they hold on to the paper. So anyway, so take your tweezers and insert sort of in the center of the petal and give it a twist. Go all the way around your flower like that, just giving it a twist. What this does is it gives your flower body and dimension. And the reason that we dampen the flower is so that it's easier to twist it. And also when we dry it, having put water on it, it becomes a lot stiffer. Now I'm using, uh, this is probably basil um, cardstock. And I like to use cardstock because it's colored all the way through or a lot of cardstock is. I don't like the kind where you have a white core. It's a matter of personal preference and honestly it depends on what you're making the flower for, whatever the project is. You know, sometimes I use printed paper like um, the ones that Eileen showed you last night were done on with printed paper if I recall. Now, I like to use a little box. And the reason I use this little box is because I'm going to dry them. And if I don't put them in a box, they blow all over the place. So I'm going to give it a quick dry. Hold on. going to make noise. So, okay. They really aren't dry, and that's okay because I have some here that I put together um, that are already dry, so you don't have to listen to me drying them. So I've got two of them. If when you uh, finish drying them, if the petals aren't quite as shaped however you like them to be, you can just add a little bit more. But the thing you'll notice is that they feel a lot stiffer, which is nice. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we need one, two, three little starbursts. And let me pull this back over here because you probably can't see them on that white. So you've got uh, one, two, three starbursts, as I call them. Let's give these a quick little mist. And get out of the way. All right, now you need a thin paintbrush handle or a skewer works. Most, oh, and this paintbrush handle is very dirty. I'm wiping the end off. Okay. Um, so now take one of these that's damp, put it on the end of the paintbrush, and just pinch it around the paintbrush handle. You don't need to, this does not need to be perfect. Flowers are not perfect. So that's what you're going to end up with. You're going to do that to all three of them. Okay. Flower gel, Eileen. <laughs> it's kind of fun having Eileen on the other side, isn't it? Okay, so I've got one, two, three little pieces you can see. And I'm going to dump these in my little box and I'm going to dry them. Yeah, if I didn't put them in that little block box, they would blow all over the place. So now I'm going to open one up fairly, if you can see, fairly big. And um, I am going to use hot glue. I don't necessarily recommend hot glue because you can really hurt yourself. But I like the fact that it goes so fast. So I'm just putting a little dab of hot glue in the middle. And I'm going to take another one of these starburst and glue it in the center. So there are now two starburst, one glued in front of the other or on top of the other. And I'm going to open this up just a little bit 
And this third one, I'm going to kind of pinch up tight. I'm going to put a dab of glue on the bottom. And attempt to put it in the middle. <laughs> and there we go. So now you've got three of these glued together, and that makes your floral center. And then you can just kind of spread the petals. This is to mimic a stamen, right? So that's what you end up with. Okay, that's all there is to this, really. Now we're going to put this flower together. Once again, I'm going to dab with glue. Put the next second flower on top. Be sure that your petals are are posing each other. You don't want these petals right over top of these petals, right? So then you can kind of fluff it with your fingers and then take this one. Actually, I like to use my tweezers for this little operation. Oops, sorry about that. And stick this in the center. And there you go. <laughs> yes, Sharon, I figured everybody would go, what in the world does she want a box for? It, it, it really is. It's just a wonderful thing to have a little box to put your parts in so they don't blow all over the place. Okay, so that is your basic flower. Now let's make a couple of leaves to go with. And I am going to use a little bit of darker green uh, ink on these leaf veins just so they stand out. You could die cut them from a different color if you wanted to, but this is easiest to me. Okay, now I wonder if my glue is going to come out of the bottle. Yes, okay. So now just going to put a few little dabs of glue on the back of these. And I'm going to glue on the petals. So there you go. I hope you all can see everything good enough. If not, complain and hopefully I'll catch it before I move on too far. This is a simple flower. You can do it with all sorts of flower dyes. Um, honestly, it's just so easy. People don't believe it. Oh, how about that? There were two there, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> okay, let's glue it again. Okay, so now we have two pretty little leaves, and once again, another little dab of glue, and whoops, get back up there. Normally, I have this on my non-stick craft mat, yeah, and I can press it down and kind of get those leaves the way I want them. And I just need a little more glue on that center, it appears. There we go. Okay, now you can give your leaves some dimension by pinching them. And there you go. It's a pretty flower. So now let's see about the other one. Okay, it's my little bag of tricks. I'm going to pull this map over because this one's going to be a little bit fancier. I hate that glare. I'm sorry. There. <laughs> Hi, Mitziana. How are you? <laughs> yes, Billy, I agree. The leaves, you just, you just need leaves. And you know... These little things also work really well, not only as flower centers, but I stick them in amongst, if I'm doing a big cluster of flowers, I'll stick them in like their fern or something. So they do double duty there. 
Okay, this is the next flower we're going to make. And let's see here. Get all my parts separated. Um, for this one, I decided I wanted to use some mist. And I'm using Lindy's. And I use these little dabber tops that Lindy's used to sell. I don't know if they still do or not, but um, if you just have spray mist, you can spray a little puddle on your mat and paint it on. So I do that too. But I'm just, instead of using water, I'm just going to mist this just because I like iridescent flowers and I think they're pretty that way. Now I'm going to get inky hands and I should have cut between the petals before I, before I um, misted, put the mist on, I forgot. Not a big deal, it's just the paper doesn't cut quite as easily when it's damp. But these are nice sharp scissors. Thank you, Betty Branton, if you are out there. And I was complaining about a pair of cutter bees that I had bought that were dull. And Betty very kindly sent me a very nice sharp pair. Okay, so we've done that. And now we are going to take a paintbrush handle again, and we are going to roll the edge of each flower. Hopefully you can see, I'm just bending the petal over the paintbrush and then rolling. Doesn't need to be pretty fancy, you know, they don't have to all look alike. But that's just rolling the edges. Didn't get those cut quite far enough. Okay. Okay. That's one. Now let's go to the second one. I do need to cut these in pretty good, but, and you know, sometimes when I get my flowers wet, sometimes a petal will tear off. And if I'm doing like three layers, I don't even bother to redo it. I just put it on the bottom. You won't notice it. That's the thing about flower making. It doesn't have to be nearly as precise as you might think. And you know what my motto is. If you mess something up, put a flower on it. How many times have you spilled ink or torn your paper or done something that you didn't mean to do? Well, if, if you do a lot of scrapbook layouts, which I used to do a lot of, that was truly something that I did frequently. Hide it under a flower. Okay, so we've curled them under like that now. And now we're going to dry them. And I'm going to aim my heat at the center of the flower. Okay, so that just kind of caused the flowers to puff up a little bit, if you can tell. And um, see from the back side. And that's what we want to do. And then I'm going to just take my fingers and cup it a little bit more so that it's uh, so that it's going to be cupped and end up like that. And if you need to uh, redo any of your petals or, you know, give them a little more dimension, you can. This one did not do quite. I think part of it's because I didn't cut these in far enough. That's all right. We can do it now. So curl and curl and curl and curl and shape. And let's see. If you really don't like the way it looks, you can always, whoops, mist it again and dry it again. OK, 
Okay. Now, set those aside for the moment, and then you want to get one of the flowers that looks like this. And let's see. I'm going to mist it a little bit, or paint some mist on it, I should say. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and do the twist thing again. Now, this one's not going to twist as much because the petals are not I didn't cut between the petals, so you don't get as much twist, but that's okay. Hi, Teresa. Okay, so we've kind of done that. Now I'm going to take my tweezers and pull these little inner petals up, like so. Okay, let's give it a dry. Okay, that's that. Now, you would take three of these, dampen them just like we did in the first flower, and put together a center in the exact same manner. And I've already done that. So uh, let's see, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of pinch it because this is gonna go inside the flower. And I'm gonna give it a little more twisting Okay, let's put this baby together. Glue, opposing petals. Oops. I don't know if you use hot glue enough, a lot. If you don't like the way something went together, you can heat it and pull it apart. But you gotta be fast. Okay. That just didn't go the way I wanted it to, so. All right. Now yeah, that's better. Okay. I'm going to pull the petals towards the center and just kind of doing a little bit more paintbrush action just to uh, get a little better curl in there. All right, now we're going to take this one and we're going to stuff it down in the middle. Oops. Got to give that glue a second to dry. And then I'm going to put this one in the center of that. Okay, so there we have it. And you know, I don't know, let's try this. Let's see what happens. Might be pretty if we put, we could have put a little of this darker ink around the edges. I bet that would work would look nice. Well, anyway, you get the idea, okay? 
so that's the other flower now for a little bit different take on the leaves uh, if you have a stylus you can do this with a stylus I'm just going to use my tweezers and draw a vein right down the middle or score a vein right down the middle okay and then I can bend them in but wait I'm not done yet um, I'm going to put mist on them too. Now I like to use two different colors of mist and oh my gosh isn't that blue but while that color is still wet I'm coming back over top with another color and this one is green so I just think that's pretty and I'm going to put these in my box and give them a quick dry. Okay. And they are dry so we can just give them another little fold there put some glue on the back of this flower there we go oops yeah I shouldn't have tried to pick it up yet yeah anyway and one final tip about hot glue if you've got strings all over the place take your heat gun those strings will melt away and you won't even know they're there so here is our flower that we just made and here's the one we made before so there you go what do you think pretty easy don't you think i think it's pretty easy i want to see everybody making some flowers now okay anybody got questions i have i can look at the uh the comments now okay all right let me clean all this up and i will show you the folio that i made let's see okay i used the new die the um, folio scoreboard to make my um folio i used that and i also used um the corners here and some of the flowers and i used a few of eileen's older guys too but so this is it right here um boy that light's bad i'm sorry my lighting is not the best in the world Let's see. um this is made with graphic 45 elegance which is a new collection that they came out with and uh, it's it's just gorgeous i am a lover of black and ivory with another color if you ask me what are your favorite things to scrap with i would probably tell you black ivory and red but black ivory and pink is probably a pretty close uh, follow-on to that uh, anyway these flowers here are this one is made just like the first flower that we made except i used a uh, patterned paper and this one right here is nothing more than where is it it's that smaller ruffly flower okay i thought i had one here hmm. well it's the one that we put in the center of the second flower just twisted and then with the little um, starburst in the middle so that's those two flowers okay so i i kind of did a traditional make on this um the spine is wide it's about two and a half inches and i made a dangle i used the uh, little dangle thing that is 
on the scoreboard die itself. I took two of them and glued them together. And um, let's see, this is a neat thing to know. Let me show you something. This is a big brush pen and any type of magic marker, including Sharpies, work, but I like a nice dark line around my edges, so this works great. The only thing I really, really caution you, when you're doing it, do it from the inside and be very careful because it is so easy for this to slip and you end up with a big slash across your pattern paper which makes me kind of sad when that happens. So, um, but it does work really nicely for um, getting in here. This one's getting kind of dry. I need a new one, but you get the idea. So now, so this folio has two sides where I made um, the, I'll call it a box insert where you can put something. I did one on either side. And on this side, I kind of made a little mini that's going to slip in there. So let's take a look at that first. What the heck? So there's another one of those flowers. And that is just that one little petal, uh, that, that smaller of the two. And I just twisted it and uh, picked up the little petals. And then I put one little starburst in the middle and put a, um, what do you call it? A doodad on it. Okay, so you now I like to make little flips and things, so this flips up, and here we have that cool little pocket, and another pocket over here, and an open, and I haven't put these two together, I need to do that. This is one of Eileen's older dies, I, oh, is it the book plate die? I can't remember Eileen, um, but anyway, so I can just have a little tuck there. And this is the beautiful Mandela die. That, that is just so gorgeous. So, of course, that's there. And uh, so that's that. So that can slip in there. And one of the things that I like to do, now, I work with paper mostly. I'm not a big mixed media artist. I don't do a lot of inking and stamping and all the, some of the great things that the other gals on the design team do. Um, I'm really just a paper girl. So when I make folios or journals or anything, I've decided that what I like to do best is cover my covers, just, you know, this basic cover with cardstock for several reasons. One being that I love my pattern papers so much I don't want to waste them on my covers because I'm going to cover my covers up with something else. So why hide that pretty paper? So I always use, I pick a cardstock that goes with all the papers I'm going to use. I don't have to worry about if my paper's right side up. I don't have to remember this is the front, this is the back, because I make two covers and they're exactly alike. And in this case, I made two black covers. And that just makes it so simple. I wasted a lot of paper in the beginning putting things on upside down, backwards, and making two front covers instead of a front and back cover and, and all of that. So this is my answer. Use, use cardstock. So then after my cardstock, then as you can see, I glue on layers of paper. I like to use foam to pop up things. And uh, I have black foam. I have white foam. I also like to use cardboard. Why? Because it's so much cheaper than foam. Um, so a lot of times, especially if I'm putting big, big somethings on there, I'll cut a piece of cardboard that's just a little bit smaller than what I'm layering and sandwich that in. It works great. Okay. Let me see. Another thing I often do, and I did here, is I put a reinforcing back uh, on the spine so that it helps keep this together better. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but I'm probably going to give it to a girlfriend. And so this side I left open. I think that'd be a great place to tuck a gift, some chocolates or something, don't you think? Thank you, Eileen. That was, uh, I, this was the bookmark 
Ducks tag and pocket. That's what this was. So, yeah. Okay. My, my soul stamping on this job. Once upon a time, that is actually a stamp. <laughs> um, and here's that book bookmarks. Oh, yes, I can. Thank you, Eileen. Um, again, that pocket. And the mandala die behind. I just... I had one that I cut up, and this was part part I didn't use somewhere else. And I thought, well, sure, that'll look good there. <laughs> Lisa, sure, you can be my girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Um, if you've worked with Graphic 45, you know they make a lot of these little cards. They're called ephemeral cards, and I use them a lot for making flips. So here's a flip, and here's the pocket. You could tuck a, a secret message in there. Okay, here I put two of the pockets from the die set. It takes this one and this one. So um, just put them together. And then this is from the same die set. I think, Eileen, I should have had that written down. I'm sorry. This is the book plates set, I think. And so I made a, a tag to slip in there. And um, that's just a die cut that comes with the paper collection. Okay, so I made a little flip here. Gosh, I really did go crazy stamping. That's a stamp and that's a stamp. So is that and that. How about that? Wow. <laughs> um, now, this is a fun little thing. Okay, this is how I made my closure. A strip of paper that tucks in like that. And another one, just pull that out. And then you've got a folded up little folio place where you can put pictures. So you could put four here and turn it over and you could put at least two here. And if I didn't have this, it would just be flopping. So I like, I always like to make some kind of a little closure. And this is a nice one. It works really well. Um, and it's, it's not expensive, right? You don't have to go buy magnets and all of that. And then there's the back. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you? Okay. Um, I wanted to put some lace into it, so I put lace on the edges. And on the back, there's the mandala. Again, I think that black print looks so pretty on the solid. Um, whoops. I keep getting out of frame. Sorry, ladies. I think that looks so pretty on that black cardstock. Just gorgeous. This is just really nice and feminine. And I love it when black is feminine because black can be a harsh color, but mix it with laces and pinks and things. And it's just so pretty. So there's that. And I think that's about it. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay, well, I thank you all so much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. It's been kind of fun doing my first big Facebook Live. And hopefully I'll be doing some more because I think it's kind of fun. And um, there's our flowers. And if you make some flowers, please, please post them here in the fan club because I want to see what you've done. And um, I know with all your creative imaginations that you can come up with way more ways to do this and some of Eileen's other um, thinlet dye collections have flower dyes in them so pull those out and mix and match them all together okay thanks a lot signing out